Twitch, Twitch, say hi to YouTube. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. All right, so this one is another one. This is round five. So, um, yeah, Technique is the title of this one called Technique. So I'm playing against Bertrand Tewagny or Tewag. He's from, I think, Germany or Belgium or something. So, um, and I'm playing black in this round. So this is right after the round where I was absolutely obliterated. I was lit. I was just like at the draw at the board drunk. And this one, I'm very sober. So here he goes E4. I go C5. This one's called Technique. 54 moves. And then watch this. Y'all ready for this? He goes C3. Bruh. He gonna play the C3 Sicilian on Mr. C3 Sicilian, bro. Bruh. Wow. That's the first thing I'm thinking. I'm like, wow, you're gonna troll me, huh? Okay. Okay. I know the ins and the outs. Right? The lefts and the rights. I got a course on this. So after this, he goes G6. I go G6, right? I go G6. He goes D4. Because this is my favorite. I like to play G6. This is my favorite line. It's G6. Because uh, I know all the lines. And then he takes takes D5, which is rainy's like 2K, uh, Fide. Knight C3 is what I like to play against this. But this is different. It's different. You can play D5 too. D5 is a move as well. The D5 lines are more Scandinavian-ish. That's why I don't like them. And your queen has to be 100% correct. If you don't have your queen at the right spots, you absolutely lose very quickly. This is why I don't like it. Right, I don't even know anything about the sign. Uh, your opening is disgusting. I don't know anything about the sign. I don't understand if that's a compliment or not. Bruh. And if you don't know anything about it, then I think who's disgusting there? Garbage. C. But after C5, C3, G6, D4, C takes. It's a compliment. Oh, okay, that's a good thing. Perfect. Huh. Excellent. Perfect. So, in fact, then that, that's good on you, J. Charles. I appreciate you, bro. We didn't have to ban you or nothing. So, pawn takes and D5 and E5. And then bishop g7. This is all theory. Knight c3. And then now here, this is the annoying move. If you're playing this from the white side, you are actually playing this correct. Knight c3 here after e5 is the most annoying move. Knight f3 falls into everything I want you to do. I want to play bishop g4. I want to take the knight. Knight c3 actually lost the game in 2020 or no it wasn't no tournament it's 2020 maybe it was early 2021 against uh robbie adamson who has three im norms very strong he's an fm though but he has three im norms and he played knight c3 and after knight c6 uh he went bishop b5 and i let him take this and he plays knight a4 and knight c5 and basically both the knights get to c5 and e5 and it's two live Oh my goodness, you about to get your head cracked, boy, if you let them do this to you. So, that was not a good game. So, I learned from this a long time ago. So, after knight to c3, knight to c6, uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, well, knight c6, knight c3, or, you know what I mean? All right, let's go back here. It was uh, e5, bishop g7, knight c3, knight c6, right. Bishop b5, I do not let him take this anymore. I used to let them take this pawn, but after this whole plan that I just talked about, it's not fun. So, I play bishop to d7. Bishop d7, and I was ready for this. Now, of course, if knight takes d5, you have the cool tactic. Knight takes e5, little windmill. If bishop takes, knight takes. This is weak. I mean, this is already winning for black, or at least better for black. This is much better. So, but the problem is I have sort of the French bishop. What this is for black is actually a, fr a French with a fincato bishop on g7. Kind of cool. Um, but our plan is to actually break this pawn structure up later and play f6 if he lets us. So bishop d7, he goes knight f3, but now I can't go bishop g4. The whole idea with bishop g4 is to attack the knight to make sure this pawn is very weak. We actually take the knight. We trade the light square bishop for the knight. We put this knight after e6, knight g7, knight f5, take on d4, and play f6. And literally, sometimes you have four pieces hitting this pawn where there's no way to defend it, right? So that's the whole plan. But here, it slows it down. So now it's going to be different. So, of course, after uh, e6, I have a bad bishop, but my case is I'm going to take. And I'm also going to use the c file. I'm going to play on the c file the whole time. He castles. I go knight g7. He goes bishop g5. And here he actually thought a long time because he tried to figure out what to do. And here, black is literally so solid. It's very equal. It's all good. I go castles next. I go f6 at some point. a6, I use the c file. Everything's great for black. He goes bishop g5. I go h6 first to see if he'll let me get the bishop pair. If he goes bishop h4, I can go g5. Yes, this is aggressive. But the, the, the goal here is after here, I go knight f5 with the idea of playing g4 as well. Knight takes d4 is in the air. Bishop takes. I castle. I still can even play f6 if I want to. So there's very nice. So he actually takes on e7. I can take with the knight, but why would I move the knight backwards? Not really good. So I took with the queen here. 
queen um, looks good. I go queen b4 in some cases. He goes rook c1, and I castle. And we stop and look at this position. And this is great. I'm, I have two bishops. Now, of course, they're not that active, but I do have two bishops. I can have f6 on tap, but you have to be careful because it weakens the g6 pawn, for instance. Say rook e1, f6. This is really bad. Then after f6, it takes. Maybe you could take. These are very weak pawns. And later on, yeah, I mean, whatever. Bishop takes. Are you going to take with the bishop or the pawn now? Taking with the bishop. It relinquishes the knight e5 square, or at least the e5 square is very weak. g6 is weak. e6 is weak. I mean, I'm not a fan of this. You can do it. And the thing is about very strong players um, is understanding that flexibility. Having the option to do it is even stronger than playing it itself. So I have the option, right? The threat is stronger than the execution. So I could play this at any moment, but I'm not going to because I want to keep my, 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 my options flexible. And I actually did this later on in the game as well. So, in fact... Um, after castling, he did uh, a3. He stops uh, the queen going from b4 because queen b4 is coming. That's exactly right, alerts. It's interesting because I use Karakhan, but this line gets straight to the point. Exactly. This is a Sicilian celebrated dragon. Very fun. Very fun. Let's get it. Assessment flat. That's good. So after a3, after the a3 move, um, I go rook f to c8 to put a rook on the c file. Rook on the file with a smile. No problems for black here. Bishop takes c6. I take back with the rook. He goes queen d3, and I double up. I mean, honestly, there's nothing going on but just improving the position. I'm just trying to improve. Every time you have to ask yourself, how can I improve in the position? So that's what we're looking to do. He goes knight a2. And this is very, very, very uh, draw. I mean, not draw like, but it's, it's you know, black can play for more because I have the bishops. But it's also very equal, to say the least. Lots of play left. This was a lot of moves from here. So after knight a2, I move my queen back to d8. With the idea of, well, first, I can't go here, but I do want to put this queen on this side of the board. So I want to go queen b6 next. You want not worry about blocking the bishop. It's going to be unblocked. It is going to be unblocked. Especially um, if he's smart, too, he's going to play rook to c1 after rook takes c6. So after rook takes c6, I take back with the rook. And what does he do? He plays rook to c1. So he knew what he was doing, right? And I also knew that his bishop is going to be active because he definitely wants to trade. So I go queen to b6. Now my queen is a little active. That's square for the queen, right? And also he takes. He takes on c6. And then we reach this position right here. He goes queen c3 and bishop f8. And now we sit here and this is going to take some technique. Bro, this is not one of those easy games where you're just going to finish the game out strong. This is going to take some technique. Right? This takes a lot of technique here. Now I do have the bishop pair. But a bishop pair is nice in open positions. He does not. This is not open. Everything's kind of closed here, closed center type stuff. But I have two bishops and I have pieces on the queen side. Let's see the technique. He goes h3, right? So here, you know, in fact, uh, Kramnik says this. Kramnik says this. Uh, what's up? Rosen with the raid. Big Rose! How it goes! What up, man? What's good, bro? I am Rosen. What's up, dog? Thanks for the raid, man. We're going over uh, my round four game, or round five game. Put it on YouTube. And this is uh, the round five game from the maya chest open so we're going over it this one's called technique eric rosen with the raid shout out to you bro let me get a shout out to him uh shout out eric i am rosen that's all right. thanks bro appreciate it thank you so much i'm rosen with the raid so uh h3 was played right this one's called technique and after h3 um kramnik says that you have to play um you have to know how to play what is it equal positions very well Right. Or sometimes you have to learn how to do nothing. And, and that's what he's saying also with equal positions and, and not nothing, but moves that improve your position. Right. So the move I made here was queen to b5. Thanks for the follows, guys, to follow train hype. Let's go. So queen b5, right? Queen b5, the idea is just be annoying. Put the queen on e2. Let's see what we can do. Right. So I go queen b5. He goes queen to c2. And again, this is called technique because this is going to take a lot. Queen to c2. And I go bishop e7. Bishop e7 is good. Get the bishop off the back rank. I have some ideas. Maybe even h5, h4. Expand a little bit. G5, g4. Bishop e7, he goes knight to c3. Engine liked queen to c4. I didn't like this because of b3. And then after b3, I go queen a6. And then he goes a4. And I really didn't like this setup here. Because now I have to like play queen a5, bishop b4, a6, b5. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. Moy says I'm good. <laughs> I'm best at doing nothing. All right. So you want to get very good at that. So queen b5. And uh, knight c3, right? Knight, knight c3, I go queen b6. So I just go back. Then he goes knight e2. So he's bouncing around with the knights. And then I'm looking to improve the position. There's lots of moves you can make, but I wanted to keep the flexibility in my plant and my pawns. And I also thought, you know, what is going on? I also looked at this. His next two moves might be knight f4 and actually sacking on e6 or g6. 
So I said, not today, big fella. Let me get out your way. Have a nice day. King F8. So I, I stepped the king to F8. I'm going to D7 as the goal. Because this is where the action is. And ideally, what I want here, this is always have plans. A plan and ideas over the moves. Now, of course, the moves will help you. But if you have plans and ideas, it helps you even more to find better moves. With that being said, I go king f8 with the plan of king e8, king d7. At some point, get the queen to c4, trade the queens, and then my king might be close enough to win the end game based off of where his king might be. This is a plan, so let's see if it works. Queen to d2, I go king e8. He was threatening queen takes h6, check. So now if he takes it, the idea is queen takes b2. This is why I abandoned the pawn. Knight moves, I also calculated knight f4. I take on a3. He takes here, takes, takes, check, king here. There's nothing he can do, right? And, and I wonder, like, what if he tries to push the pawn, right? Well, I'm first, actually. Here, push, and then push, and then push, and then push, and then check, right? And then push. And this is this got very weird, actually. Wait, no, this is not it, because he can go queen here. It, this is very weird, where I have to watch this pawn. I have to, like, check and get around. It's very, very difficult. He didn't go for this, but I was like, this is definitely a possibility that I looked at king here h4 and maybe like check here or something king here queen f4 check right this is pretty good at least i can stay around this you can't go g3 because queen takes f3 i'm up a pawn or i'm up a piece here and i have these but you do have to watch this pawn and i, I was i was uh i was very cautious of this but i played king e8 and he goes um he went knight f4 he did go knight f4 right King F8 was about that action, exactly. So, knight F4, I go bishop to B5, right? Improving, making this nice. Maybe put the bishop on A6, but it hinders the A pawn on A7. So, bishop B5, he goes back to E2. Knight to E2, and I just be good at nothing, right? Bishop F8, cool. You're not going to take it? I'm going to tuck it. So, now look at the improvement I made. My king was on G8. My bishop was on E7, right? And my bishop was on C6. So, improvement-wise, the bishop, yeah, maybe it could be better on E7, but it's defending the pawn now. My king is now slightly closer to the center, and it's an end game or very close. And this bishop is now on a better diagonal than it was before. So I'm improving, right? This is what you want in positions that are very static, meaning not a lot, lot going on, not lots of tactics, equal positions, pawn structures, understanding the plans and ideas, or at least trying to have one. So this is improvement. I'm improving in my position, which is better than sitting around and doing nothing. He goes queen to c2, and as you see, he's just kind of shuffling. But me, I'm improving just a little bit by little bit, small advantages, something like Magnus type, you know, things king to d7 right as uh, i just get better all right i stop queen to c8 check king to d7 my king feels good knight back to c3 he's been there before and instead of going bishop c4 i didn't want to get hit with knight to d2 so i just went oops i just went back to uh wait what position is this i just went back here to c6 bishop to c6 yeah bishop a6 i didn't like because i hinder or you want flexibility and options these pawns i don't want to commit them yet i don't want to commit to a6 when maybe i want to play a5 I don't want to commit to a5, but maybe he might play b3 and lock me out for a while or, or something else. Like b3 actually hangs a3. But I don't. I want to keep this here as long as I can to keep options and flexibility. You see this a lot in Grandmaster play with flexibility and options and patience. So bishop to c6, and then uh, he goes king f1. I go queen a6, he goes king g1. And he was getting lower on time too, maybe like 10, 15 minutes here. I go queen to b6, just to shuffle, see if he goes back. He went king h1. I'm like, oh, so this is showing me and a lot of times when you repeat moves, it shows, you know, kind of their hand. Are you going to play something else? Are you, are you OK with a draw here? And he played King H1 and I'm like, oh, nice. So he doesn't really have a plan. Perfect. Right. So let's just try to milk the position and use some technique. I go Queen A5. My idea here is to go B5. Right. But the problem with B5 here and actually he went King G1 and I went Bishop E7. But I didn't go B5 because of this. Right. You always going to calculate and look at your opponent's counterplay b5 he goes knight a2 i don't want to go b4 yet because it gives up the bishop pair right b4 knight takes bishop takes like this is not winning i mean we can just shake hands right now bro like Bruh. i'm not like this is a draw like what is this what is this this is a draw for sure this is a draw so and then i'm like well shoot i back up go a5 and then he goes b4 wow wow what kind of bishop is this this is not a bishop you can move it. I can put it right here. It'd be the same right here. It'd be it'd be the same on any square that I put it on besides C4. This is not a bishop anymore. Right. I go A5. I'm never getting past this. I'm never, ever getting past this. Right. So I couldn't do go with this route. Right. So I went Queen A5. And then I'm like, all right, let's go Bishop B7 just to see what he does. He goes King H1. And then I'm, I go H5. Right. So technique. I'm just, you know, pushing. I'm improving. 
seeing what you're doing. He goes king g1. I go back. Queen b6. Right? Queen b6. And then he goes h4. And I'm like, all right, you know what? At this point, let's go for it. So now I go with a5. I go with the a5 idea. Now, I think his best bet was back and forth like this. Knight a2. My idea was to go queen a6. And then um, maybe make a waiting move, right? b5. Knight. No, uh, b5. I think he goes b4. Uh, in many cases so i had to go a4 first but here as you see it's difficult to get through but he didn't go for the difficulty here let me actually see yeah engine says this is complete zeros right now queen a6 king here and even if i go b5 yeah he can go b4 right he can go b4 and this is completely zeros so in fact after i go a5 he goes king h2 i go queen a6 he goes king g1 i'm like perfect cool so now I go a4. And just to make it a little bit different, if you go b4, I can opposite and take on a3 now. And now my idea is to actually maybe try to penetrate the uh the, the light squares that you have problems with. So queen to c4, which ties this knight down. Next idea might be b5, b4. For instance, let me just show you what happens if he shuffles. Right? Literally just shuffling pieces does not work. B4 takes, I can go bishop takes. Now I'm threatening to play a3. You move, I go a3, you lose the game. And if you ever move the knight, I take on d4. So this is the whole idea was to try to tie him down go here push these pawns a3 you take i take the knight just a very nice sequence of moves that i had as a plan which he didn't go for he didn't go for All right let's see what questions is there a world where sacking e7 h4 and d4 is possible it is possible but you know you don't want to um be drastic here i think my coach would say uh there's playing for a win and pushing for a win and a lot of times um you know you can push for you pushing for a win is different and bishop takes h4 and trying to do that you're pushing for a win but that don't mean you're going to win. Bruh. And you gave up a whole piece for two pawns, right? And if it ain't working, you just push for a win and a loss, right? So it's different. It's a little bit different. Playing for a win is like, you know, I'm, I'm what I'm doing now. Progressing, slowly making improvements. So after A4, he goes knight to A2, actually, in fact, with knight B4 ideas. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. I don't care about none of that. All right, chat, it's on you. Now, remember the plan from earlier, technique, right? We wanted to get the king to the center. And after at some point, we wanted to play what move, chat? This is a crucial moment. It's black to move. He goes knight a2. And what do you do? What do you do from this position, chat? It's on you. It's on you. Let's get some answers in the chat while I answer this message. Queen trade. Queen c4. We need two. Thanks for the follow. Kimi Sandana. Queen C4. Okay. Queen C4. Panther. Bishop B4. Wow. Bishop B4. Jumping off the deep end. There you go. He right there on the screen. Look at him. Garbage. He meant Bishop B5 though. And Bishop B5 is what he meant. I know what he meant. I know he wasn't tripping like that. Bishop B5. Just sack the queen. Don't need it. Exactly. Exactly. Bishop B5. Kind of points there. But doesn't really do it. In fact. The move here guys. It's queen to c4. There you go, chat. There it is. It's on the board. Queen c4. Offering a queen trade, right? He takes it. After we trade queens. Knight g5. This is a very strong move. Now, find the sequence of moves. Right? I want you to find the sequence. Not just one move. Find the sequence of moves here. This is requires calculation. COE, calculation over everything. Of course, as I plug that right there, as I plug it, I have to pull up the merge store bow. Oh my goodness. It comes up every time somehow. After, like I, It's just magic. Calculation over everything. Make sure you guys calculate, grab some merch on your way out at the same time. But it is black to move in this position. What do you do? All right? Finger say, yeah, my finger slipped and went to the site. Calculation over everything. Make sure you get some shopcantymerch.com. Here it is. What's the sequence of moves that you need to calculate? And I calculate how many moves here? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, so I went like, well, it was like 10 ply, 10 ply, re reply. That means you make one, I make one. Those are ply. But two moves equal one in chess, which is ridiculous to me. One move is two. Like, I mean, two moves is one. But in real chess, like, if I make a move and you make a move, that's two moves. But really, it's like, so 10... Uh, what is it uh 10 ply which is really like 10 moves calculating here but it's really f five moves if you want to put it in you know real notation terms um black to move what do you do f6 e6 he takes f6 bishop takes f6 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 
King E8. Pawn to, pawn to F6. Very good, chat. Very good. F6, but what you're missing is the move that he played, Knight F7. This is a move you had to find, and this one is actually a tricky, tricky move. So what is the next move? What's the sequence from here? You actually need to be careful, in fact. Believe it or not. Believe it or not, Knight F7 is a very strong move. Very strong. Very strong. Gotta watch F7. That's what he played, too. He got Knight F7. That's exactly what he played. That's exactly what he played. King E8. What does Knight F7 do? Well, the fact is, if I take on E5, that is not live. Knight takes E5 here and takes. And who's winning now? Maybe Black Steel. But this is not what we wanted here. Not what we wanted. Right. It's five turns. Just as a turn-based game. No, it's Ply. It's actually Ply. They call it Ply, bro. They call it Ply. They definitely call it Ply. Right. Maybe, especially there's lots of places that call it that. Maybe it can be turns, but in fact, even the uh, Nigel Short this weekend was like, oh yeah, the ply, the reply. My reply is Bruh. it's always ply. It's been a long time like that. King E8. King E8 is a move. King C7. A King E8 is a move. King E8 is a move. I chose the King C7 route. I chose the King C7 route. With King B6, King B5. I'm trying to go this route. Especially after taking, right? So King to C7 is the route I chose. With the idea of now I'm going to take at some point, right? Maybe not now. I also have bishop e8. But whenever you take, which he does, takes, bishop takes, knight e5 now. Now I take it. And this is what I calculated. Then my king's going to run up. F4 is not going to work. I have enough time to get there. I also run the king this way as well. Very nice. Very nice plan. I calculated king b6. He went knight b4. King c5, knight c2. In games, chat. In games. Black to move. Find it. Find it. The move, chat. Find the move. Find the move. Nice maneuver calculations, can't you? I mean, you know, look, COE, we live by it. You know it. Calculation over everything. We calculate left and right. Bishop e4, c3 in a weird way. I like c3. Bishop e4, right? Bishop e4 and c3, both being moves. From chat here. Bishop e4 and c3. King d5. Putting the king on d5 has been instructional. Let's go, bro. You got a third? Uh, yeah. yeah. He said, why are you the third? Because uh, my, my, my dad was the second and my grandfather um, was the first. Bruh. It's called apply, but I'm still sitting the word for turns. For clarity and pointing out why I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's one turn. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard it as a turns. I'm not going to lie. You know, I've always heard it from books and 3Ms as apply and reply. Okay, good to know. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the follow Singapore back again. So King D5 is not a move. Bruh. Okay, it is a move, but in fact, it just drastically changes the evaluation by a lot. It's like minus seven right now after the move we can play. King D5 is like minus three. But in fact, if you found C3, clap it up, chat. Clap it up. Oh my goodness. Pat yourself on the back. Real hard flex. COE. Oh my goodness. C3 is the move, chat. Very nice. C3 is a very nice move. B4 will be opposite. Doesn't work. B4, Ampasai. Oh my goodness. Look at these pawns. Let's get this off the screen. This is a family channel, right? We don't want that. So he doesn't do that. Um, of course, pawn, and I'm, I'm threatening to take it. So he has to take it. Then we step the king up. King C4 to attack the pawn. Knight to D4. And then what do you play now, chat? I want accuracy here. Accuracy, please. What do you play now? What's wrong with Bishop E4? Bishop E4 was, was move number two. But C3, this is more clear cut. This is more clear cut is a because I'm going like this is a winning in game 100. Bishop e4 is still winning, but you have to maneuver the king around now. Like if you go back here, right? Bishop e4, I can't go here yet. So let's say he makes a waiting move, like king f1 or even f3 or something else, right? I have to like find a move. Then I can play c3, right? But then why did why didn't I play it last move, right? So c3 is the move here, and after c3, pawn takes knight uh, king c4. Knight d4 and chat. I see it now. That's correct. I could just take the pawn and be greedy. But I could also play bishop d7 or bishop d5. Both work. I went bishop d7. Right. I went bishop d7 because the reason why I went bishop d7 is because I saw this. And I really didn't want to give him any counterplay. What, uh, who was the best at that? Karpov, right? Karpov would draw more games even before, even in chances where he had real, real, <laughs> real, real winning chances, right? He had some real winning chances. And he actually would have a draw there because he's stopping what you want to do more than what he wanted to do, right? Prophylaxis. So, of course, bishop to d7 is what I chose. Knight e2 with the knight f4 idea. 
And instead of me going king b3, I go bishop e8. I don't want you to take nothing, bro. I'm not giving him any type of counterplay or no type of, oh man, I missed that. Oh man, I should have calculated, right? Calculation over everything. Calculate and make sure that we do not give him any type of counterplay. So bishop to e1, he goes king f1. And then um, now I'm not going bishop f7. I can, but I mean, I don't want to go bishop f7 because then knight d4, right? If I go bishop f7 right now, he goes knight d4. Well, maybe not. I can go, king takes here. And, uh, and But it's weird. So what I did is I just went king b3 now. I calculated a little bit more, a little bit more, just to say, well, if he gets this pawn, how long is it going to take, right? And now, of course, a lot of times this is an easy way to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he queen, I queen in six. He queens in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bro, I mean, <laughs> how many moves, Bruh. right? Way more, way more, right? So king b3. Knight check. I take the pawn. He takes mine. King b2. He went knight d4. And that's how I knew this was over. Because I'm like, well, shoot, this one don't even go anywhere where you can attack the knight. I mean, the bishop. What I calculated is something like knight here. But even here, I can just push. I can just push the pawn because it doesn't matter. And then you move and you, you have no chance, right? You have no chance. I could bring the queen back, attack the knight and the pawn at the same time. All right, so this is over. This is over. So, right, um, bishop bishop f7 is a thing, but um, I calculated that this is just faster with calculation. You can do everything right with, with great calculation comes great responsibility, you know. <laughs> so, it is right when you got the calculation is like a superpower, right? But bishop f7 is uh, is playable, but I could play this better be based off of calculation. Says that this is just winning, it's faster, but bishop f7 is a move as well. King b3 is just much faster, gets the game over with, and there's nothing he can do about it based off calculation. Knight d4, I go a3, and the game is over. And this one's called technique. This one's called technique. So we win the game. We win the game from an equal position, just from very small improvements. I feel like Magnus in this one. I felt very, very good about this one. Because this was a very, very nice maneuver, right? And a very nice slow game where I just grinded in equal position yo yo thanks for the tier one appreciate it thank you bro what's good what's good it's good thanks for the tier one bro resign city yeah he got up out of there he resigned he resigned yeah and uh, we won this game so this was technique make sure you guys subscribe to the youtube channel this was for youtube here of course and we see you uh for round six on the next